Drip campaigns are a method used in direct marketing to acquire customers through automation and lead nurturing. It involves a series of actions that occur over a long period of time in order to nurture records through the marketing funnel. To get here, simply click settings and go to drip campaigns. It's under the sales and marketing dropdown. Once you're here, depending on your industry, you may have some pre-built campaigns all ready to go for you and broken up based on what they're targeting. So here in mortgage, we have a loan updates file, which will contain all the campaigns uh, geared towards updating a record and partners throughout the loan process. Referral partner building, these are targeting our referral partners and contacts to generate referral business. And then our prospecting and conversion will target our leads to generate some business. So once you have a folder open, you can see all the drip campaigns within where you can edit. The duplicate button will make a carbon copy of this campaign um, and just put the title of copy at the end of it. So you know that that is your copy, your start status the duration and where you can turn it off and on kind of gives you a high level overview of that drip, but you can click the title to open that drip campaign up. And this is going to open it to a lot more details and really a drip campaign can be boiled down to it only runs off of the status of the record. So it will organically start and stop as they're moving through your statuses and milestones. This top lock, this is just enrollment criteria. All you're doing is telling the system what records can start on this automated marketing campaign. Give it a title. You can put it in a folder and set what record types can be included. This is a new lead high engagement, so we're only including leads, but you can include different record types as well if it's more of a general campaign that everyone should be enrolled in. The start status, this is going to be the status that starts the campaign. So once it's on and active, like this one is, anything that hits the status of new will start this drip campaign. The stop status, this is going to be what, what status they have to reach in order to stop the campaign. The reason being is if you set a record to appointment scheduled, they're really no longer a new lead and all the content in this campaign no longer applies. So we don't want to continue to follow up with them once we've moved them into one of these stop statuses. And you also have advanced conditions where you can get more specific with your enrollment criteria. So instead of just starting on new, maybe they have to have the tag of purchase or, you know, refinance in order to start when they hit the status of new. And you can also set the source as an enrollment criteria too. So the metric is does not equal. So put any sources here that you don't want to start this campaign. You can add an advanced run schedule as well if you want it to run for a specific um, duration, you know, during a specific time period in the day. So most commonly I'll see people set a run schedule of Monday through Friday, eight to five. And all you do is hit the pencil, set your start time as eight, put your end time as five and click save. And then just do that for the rest of the days that you want the campaign to run for. Now, if a record step, like an email or a text is scheduled to go out outside of these hours, it will just queue. And then as soon as the run schedule opens up, that communication will go out and the sequence will continue based on that. The bottom block here, this is all um, your workflow. So it'll show you every step that's going out, all the emails, all the texts, etc. To add a new step, simply click on the button corresponding to the step you want to create. So if you want an email to go out, click email. If you want a text, click text. You can also include status changes. So for example, at the bottom of this campaign, instead of just letting the campaign end, we are actually changing their status to long-term nurture. And what that's going to do is it's going to move them out of this campaign and put them into a new one. To edit a campaign title, so the steps title, in this case, confirmation email from the company, just click it and you can go in here and edit the title of the step. To see a overview of what it looks like, click the down arrow 
and it'll pull up what that step looks like. And you can also edit it simply by clicking the pencil icon. It's going to pull up that full email for you, where you can go in here and backspace everything you don't want, insert any links and images using the buttons down below, as well as videos, etc. Personalized tokens, these are going to pull variable data from within the record. So if we want to pull the lead's first name, last name, you know, their phone number, email, etc., we can do so. And you can also just search by that metric too. So if we want loan amount in here, as long as the lead's loan amount is entered, we can put this token into the drip simply by copying and pasting. Once you're happy with your edits, you can scroll to the bottom and click save. Now, when you are adding a new step, let's say we want to add an email, it's going to pull up a pop-up where you can choose a pre-built template in the system, as well as put in your subject line and type out your email. Again, use those buttons to insert links and images, videos, as well as variable data from within the record. And then just make sure it's correct who it's coming from and who it's going to. By default, it comes from the user to the lead, but you can use these personalized tokens to input, you know, different things. So if you want it to come from the assigned loan officer on the file, you can do so. Or if you want it to go to, let's say the co-borrower instead, you can copy the co-borrower email token and paste that in here as well. Get rid of the lead email token. You can also add CC and BCC as well, and then simply click Save Step Settings. Once you add a new step, it'll populate at the bottom of your workflow, and you can easily move them around just by hovering over the number and clicking and dragging where you want it in your workflow. You'll also want to make sure your delays are set correctly as you're needing. So the delay is going to be this drop down here. The top step will always delay from the time they hit the status and started the campaign. So if you want the email to go out immediately, set it to immediately. If you want it to delay by a certain amount of time, you can do so. Outside of the first step, every step down below will delay from the previous step. So email two is going out right after email one, and this text is going out right after this email. This email is delaying one day from this text and so on down below. Use the day counter on the right to keep track of what day your communications are going out. You also have time frames on the right that you can schedule for delays of one day or more. So if you have a step such as a follow up email delaying by one day and you want it to go out at a specific time, you can set that time frame here to go out in between those hours that you wish. Once you are happy with your campaign and you are good to go, make sure you click save and then make sure the campaign is turned on. Um, once the campaign is on, it does not enroll anything that's already in the start status. So you could have a hundred records and new, turn this campaign on and nothing's gonna happen. What it's gonna do is once it's on, anything that hits the enrollment criteria that you set from that point forward will be enrolled in the campaign successfully. We hope this video helps. If you have any follow-up questions at all, just let us know. We're more than happy to help. Uh, just shoot us an email, support at setshape.com, and we hope you have a great rest of your day.